Hey gang, and welcome to another Worksheet Solutions Walkthrough. For the worksheet, reactions of alkenes, tackling all of them. Okay gang, so if you're here, I'm assuming you are firmly lodged into the, war, uh, the world of alkenes. You've watched a bunch of videos, there are a lot of reactions. Maybe you've attempted uh, you know, the, the two worksheets for alkenes. If you're looking for answers, you're in the right place, place right? So rehash worksheets, worksheet solutions walkthroughs, if I can pronounce it correctly, is when uh, you look at a worksheet, you're looking at the answers, you're wondering how the answers were arrived at. This video is to go through the worksheet, explain the answers uh, that you, you know, for the questions you've attempted. So if you're looking for explanations in the world of alkenes, you're in the right place. So let's get started. Okay, gang, so in for the first five reactions, if we take a look, we're just gonna go them one at a time. We're gonna try and keep this efficient because you know these videos can get long. All right, so in the first reaction, right up here, we see a double bond. We obviously have an alkene. It's the alkene worksheet, no surprise. We have HCl. So I hope what you're seeing here, and again, I know there's a, a lot of reactions and hopefully eventually you get a bird's eye view. Please reference the, you know, the reaction sheet I provided for this alkene section. But this just like a, looks like a Markovnikov addition of a binary acid, and that binary acid is HCl. So remember, al the bond means we have literally twice as much negative charge present. Double bonds have nucleophilic character. We see a big fat H, you know, there, there's a delta, big fat delta plus on that uh, hydrogen, strong acid, right? So what we know will happen is we will have a protonation happen. So what I like to do, remember, we're forming carbocations. We know they can shift. Let's draw the one we form, see if we can shift it, shift if needed, and then we can finish the reaction. So we know, I'll draw my carbocations over here. The best carbocation we can form here is this tertiary one right there. Chlorine is just going to attack. We can't shift that carbocation to make it anywhere you know, more stable. The tertiary is the best we can do. So what I like to do, because again, we have, you know, attack going on. Sometimes we create stereo centers. In this case, I hope you can see that we are not at uh, attached to four different things because while we do have the methyl group and the chlorine, we have this group and this group being the same. So no stereo center there. We just have to reflect the correct regiochemistry, right? Where the chemistry is actually happening, where the bonds are made. So that is the answer to one. Moving on to two. Again, same deal. We have a more common competition of, you know, HI now to this double bond. So, no surprise, the very nucleophilic double bond will grab H plus. Electrons will get dumped onto uh, what will be I minus. The initial carbocation we make, though, be very careful, is the secondary one right here. And I think you can see we can absolutely perform a methyl shift. So the carbocation, I'm gonna draw this over here, will be like this. Okay, right there. And then we'd have I minus attack. So let me connect everything together and I think what you will see is we absolutely have a stereo center right here because we have an iodide attached, methyl group, ethyl group, and then an isopropyl group. So what we need to do here is make sure, and again, you have the liberty of deciding what's wedged and dashed as long as you keep it straight, but you can draw this, and then I would draw plus enantiomer because remember, gang, when this attack happens, that's an sp2 carbon. It is trigonal planar, flat. So there's no preference for that iodide to attack this way or this way. So since we did produce a stereo center, you need to reflect the fact that you will have a racemic mixture, okay? So moving on down here. So this is the Markovnikov addition of water to this double bond. Again, we're gonna have a protonation step. So we have the choice of forming this secondary carbocation or this secondary carbocation. I hope you are seeing that this carbocation is a bit better to make because we can hydride shift that carbo, you know, we can hydride shift over here to the secondary carbocation to then make a more stable tertiary carbocation. And then we can add water. Water would attack. And I think you will see 
when we draw our product, which looks like this. Yes, I am skipping a cleanup step, but this is not a stereo center because these groups are the same. So the regio chemistry just needs to be reflected. That is our final product. Moving on here, again, I hope what you're gonna see is, you know, we can make a carbocation here, or we can make the carbocation here. Clearly, we will make the tertiary carbocation, and finally, a situation where no shifts happen. You just need to tack the OH on the, to that tertiary carbocation. You can see we don't have to reflect stereochemistry because this carbon is not a stereo center because we are attached to two methyl groups. There are not four unique groups on that carbon. So the achiral structure, just have to get the regiochemistry correct. Now down here, a little bit more involved. So we have the addition of bromine across this double bond right here. So what I like to do for this is you know that you form that cyclic bromonium ion. So I like to form that. And it's important to note that, oh, that's not gonna work well, that I'm gonna form it like this, which means my ethyl group will be dashed. But just know that you can absolutely form the enantiomer of that and we will reflect that in our product. But, uh, so we will then, the Br- minus attacks this way. Oh, no, got that backwards. Oops, sorry, gang. We attack the more substituted carbon. I apologize. We attack the more substituted carbon. There we go. So our product looks like this. So this is one of the two. We have a bromine. That's the, the bromine that was the leaving group. The ethyl group flips up to be a wedge. The bromine that attacked is a dash. And again, because we could form that cyclic bromonium ion as well as this cyclic bromonium ion initially, whoop, that's an ethyl. Just make sure whenever you have this type of reaction, just tack on a nice plus enantiomer, okay? Those are the first five, if you were confused, Run it back a little bit, review when I went over the problem, but we are charging on to the second page, so let's do it. Okay, gang, on to page two, and this is gonna be the first half of page two, the first four of the seven problems on that page. Okay, so if we take a look here, first question. We see it's gonna be an addition of chlorine across this double bond. However, it's not just gonna be chlorine because we have water as our solvent, which is going to participate in the reaction. So first step is draw that cyclic chloronium ion. So I'm going to do it over here. So remember, chlorine's going across this double bond. So I'm gonna draw my chlorine attached as two wedges. But remember, we will get a racemic mixture here, so we will reflect that in our product. And if chlorine is a dash, that means that methyl group, sorry, if chlorine's a wedge, that means that methyl group is a dash. And then remember, because once you stick that chlorine on, there's only one Cl minus that's in solution, but you have so much water around. Water will actually participate in the reaction. And remember, water is going to attack that more substituted carbon as if you're attacking an epoxide. Oh, I forgot to do this in the previous problem. There's technically a positive charge there. Uh, water will attack that mo mo more substituted carbon. So when you draw your product over here, and I'll do this in blue because more colors, why not? That means your chlorine is your leaving group here. So it stays a wedge, at least in this enantiomer that we're drawing. Your water comes from the backside. It has to attack and become as, uh, you know, attach as a dash. I'll skip the workup or the cleanup. It's gonna be a dash, which means the methyl group has to flip up and become a wedge. So this is your product right here, but make sure to tack on a nice little plus enantiomer because it, it's a racemic mixture, because there's no preference for the cyclic chloronium ion to form as you know, two wedges or two dashes, okay? So that's the answer to that problem. So the second problem right here is just the, uh, the deoxymercuration, uh, the, <laughs> I always forget the phrase, but we're adding uh, an OH across the double, well, to the double bond in a way where there's no rearrangements, right? So we are just all business, whoa, all business here. We're going to just put the 
um, oxygen right here. It's going to be a straight Markovnik competition with no rearrangements. So all we need to do is go ahead and reflect that. And given the mechanism, don't reflect stereochemistry. You just need to attach it like that. Um, if you need to know the mechanism, comment on this video, and I'd be more than happy to provide that video as well. Okay, so moving on here. Now we've got the anti Markovnikov competition of water to this, this is hydroboration. So no rearrangements here. You know, of the two positions we can add water to here, this is tertiary, this is secondary, we're gonna go with this position. So all you need to draw is this right there. Just the regiochemistry for this one. So last problem for the first part of page two, we're creating epoxide right here. So the only thing I was really looking for here, no, t no not really any tricks, but feel free, you know, we had this going on and you can do plus an antimer, but there you go. That's all this was looking for, right? Because there's no reason why you couldn't form the epoxide like this as well. So that does it for the first part of page two. So let's get those last three and then go to page three. So now we're gonna finish out page two with these last three problems. So if we take a look here, so I am bringing back, yeah, I know it's not technically uh, in the slew of the new reactions we've learned, but it's an alkene reaction. So this is a, uh, you know, elimination with the dehydration with sulfuric acid and heat. Remember, we have heat, which we know favors E1. This is an E1 mechanism. But if we take a look here, the first thing we're gonna do, right, is we know that this reaction works by protonating the oxygen. So the OH becomes water, becomes a good leaving group. So volatilis occurs and this leaves and you guessed it, we form a carbocation. So with our new carbocation training, because we know shifts happen, shifts are a thing, let's see, you know, draw the carbocation. I definitely see a tertiary position. And I also see a tertiary position that's a little bit more special, but let's draw the, um, not only am I going to draw the, I'm gonna do it down over here. So I'm gonna draw the structure completely out. So this is an isopropyl group up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and reflect that. And we also have another isopropyl group down there. And our carbocation is nestled in right here, a secondary carbon. So I hope that you can see, we're definitely gonna shift this carbocation. The question is, do we shift it to this tertiary carbocation or do we shift it over here? And we're actually going to shift it over here, the hydride shift, because this is a ben the benzylic position. This carbon, if we stick a charge here, not only is it tertiary, but the electrons in the, ben the benzene ring, we can draw resonance to suck that charge in there. So there's a whole slew of resonance for, at, available at this position that's not available when the charge is over there. So this, this carbon is where we will shift the charge to. It's much more stable. I kind of designed this problem just to illustrate you know, this type of situation. So we'll, I'm going to go ahead and erase this and draw the final carbocation, which is right here. So remember, we're doing E1. We wanna make the most substituted double bond. So I hope what you're seeing is, yeah, we could make a tri-substituted double bond going this way, right? Because this carbon is tertiary, this carbon is secondary. However, we now have the ability to make a tertiary, tertiary carbon, you know, double bond. So we will have this happen, something will pick up that proton, that H. So our final product is actually this right there. So I think that's about as hard as it can get with the dehydration of, well, with sulfuric reaction, or sorry, sulfuric acid reaction. Uh, so moving on here, we have two kind of uh, osmium tetroxide additions. Remember, both of these are syn additions. So we're gonna make a diol. We're gonna add two OHs and they're gonna be on the same side of our structure. So the reason why I made this as wacky as it is is because I wanted to show an example that produced stereocenters. So I'm gonna just mostly draw, redraw my structure first. Isopropyl group, methyl group, methyl group, ethyl group, and 
I'm just gonna first attach, I'm just gonna get the regio chemistry correct. And draw this the same way. Okay, cool. So these need to be, these OHs need to be on the same side. They need to be added in the same manner of the structure. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do wedges right here, which means I need to dash two things. So pick two things, go ahead and dash those suckers. That gets you the correct answer with regio and stereochemistry, but there was no reason why we had to add those as wedges. So make sure you include a nice big fat plus an antimer at the end because there's no preference as to how they get added on the, the front of the you know double bond or underneath the double bond. And we're just gonna do the same exercise here, but on a ring. So I hope you can see, really, we just need to go ahead and draw our ring again. Gonna just wedge two OHs, no rhyme or reason as to why we're doing that because they could have been two dashes and we can then tack on a nice plus an antimer as well. And that gang rounds out page two. So without further ado, page three. On page three, we have four problems. So looking at these, we just have two ozonolysis problems and two and the you know addition of HBr in an anti-Markovnikov fashion. So to take a look here, right, we get our breaking out our molecular scissors. So in this first problem, you can see we're just going to cut this bond right here, and we're not symmetrical, so we're gonna have two different products, and given the reagents we have here, we are forming aldehydes and ketones. So if you can see, we have a one, two, three, we're gonna have a product like this, aldehyde right on this carbon, and you can see one, two, three, four, we're going to make a product like this with a ketone on the second carbon right there, one of the interior carbons. So that handles that first one. Now I like this problem. So again, it's a nose analysis problem, but we're gonna be breaking a ring. So we're not gonna get two different things. We're really just going to get um, a straight line structure, right? Because we're taking a ring and we're just breaking it. So everyone's still connected. Just we're just, we don't wrap around and connect to our, you know, ourselves again. So when you do these problems, I really like to number our carbons in the chain, right? So you can see, I, I include the one here just because we're gonna go around like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw six carbons in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see nothing on one. However, we're going to have carbonyls on two and six. So on two, we have a ketone, nothing on three. Make sure on four, one, two, three, four, you reflect the methyl group is still there. Nothing on five, and then lastly on six, we have an aldehyde, Bring it up the caboose. Okay, so, halfway. Uh, this structure right here, we're just going for regiochemistry, ignore stereochemistry, right? So, remember, anti markovnikov competition of HBr. So given our choice to place a bromine on the tertiary carbon here, or the secondary carbon here, you already know what we're doing. We're going secondary bromine right here. Make sure to fill in the rest of your groups. And last but not least, just to really drill at home, again, an anti-Markovnikov addition of HBr. So primary versus secondary usually would be secondary. However, this is the anti-addition, the opposite of what we normally do. So bromine right there. And gang, that finishes page three. So for the next four or five problems, the last page, page four, I intentionally wanted to, you know, I hope some of these, I would say maybe a bit challenging. I wanted these last ones to be hard. So if you don't get them right away, don't worry. They're designed to be very difficult, but please understand them and try to replicate them and make sure that you could, because if you can do these problems coming up, you're in really good shape. So page four, let's do it. Okay, gang, for these page four problems, we're gonna take them, you know, we're gonna do two, two, and the last one will be done by itself. Okay. So we're taking a look up here. So we're gonna be seeing many more steps in these complete the reaction problems, but I highly encourage you, one, to not freak out, and two, take them one step at a time. Miley Cyrus style, right? If that's the right uh, reference. Seriously, just go step by step and, you know, just draw on the margins, what happens after each one, carry it forward. You got this, by the end, you'll, you know, before you know it, you'll be through all the reaction steps. So. If we look at this right here, the very first step is we have a Grignard reagent. We have ethyl Grignard. 
So we have a good nucleophile, and would you look at that, we have an aldehyde just begging to be attacked. So the very first thing we're going to do is, and if I draw a bond right here, is the ethyl Grignard will attack, we will kick electrons up, and I hope you can kind of lump one and two together. We will do some work up. So I will draw over here because I'm limited on space. And of course, I literally drew it where I'm going to run into space problems. An OH, an ethyl, and we didn't touch this wedge methyl whatsoever. So that kind of handles first the one and two, right? So we're just attacking and then we are protonating because we would have O minus right afterwards. So that's how we get um, that right there. So, and maybe you're wondering, oh, why didn't Joe maybe reflect stereochemistry? Here's why. So in the second step, would you look at that? The dehydration with sulfuric acid is back, right? We have H2SO4 reflux and heat. We're going E1. We're going to have a double bond after this step. So in this structure, right, which is representative of one and two, so we can even put little check marks like we've done these steps right here. Highly encouraged to do that. We are going to protonate this alcohol to water. Oh, my black marker's dying on me a little bit. Switch it up. There we go, much better. Okay, so water will leave. So here is something interesting. We are going to get, mm, let me draw this over here. So methyl group, nothing cooking there. We are going to form a cardiocation at this position, planar. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do, man, I drew this a little too high. So wedge methyl group, gonna draw a straight line to this positive charge. The ethyl group's over here, right? So straight lines only off of that planar sp2 carbocation, right? So no more dash. So secondary carbocation, we have to freeze. Can we make it better? And the answer is a big fat yes, because just south of that secondary carbocation, we have a, woof, we have a tertiary position, too much excitement. Can't draw a straight line. So I'm going to expose that hydrogen right there. We are going to red rover, red rover, move it on over. So this is all and maybe, you know, this is the scribblings in your margins, or if you can organize it a little bit better than me, please do that. But we still have the methyl group. Now we have straight line ethyl and a carbocation on the tertiary carbon at the top of our ring. And now it's time to do E1. Well, would you look at that? The most substituted double bond we can make is between this tertiary carbon and this tertiary carbon. And we have a hydrogen to eliminate, so we can absolutely have that happen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this structure over here. Our final answer for this problem is straight line up, ethyl group attached from the Grignard, double bond right here, and make sure, because this is now, an, you know, we have sp2 carbons, right? We have to then make sure this line to the methyl group is a straight line, no longer a wedge, this is your final answer, Joe Chemist. So it's all about, we did a Grignard attack, then we did this um, dehydration reaction, which produced carbocation, which we then had to shift, and made a double bond. Okay, reaction two, which has five steps. So, but again, one step at a time. No need to rush. It's like learning to fly. Okay, so I hope you can see in these first two right here, we're gonna be doing a reduction, right? We're going to be attacking with hydride, H minus, a little throwback to our reduction days. So this ketone is going to turn into an alcohol. So I'll draw this over here. We're going to have this right there. Then this OH is going to perform SN2 on this tosyl chloride. So I'll, we'll do one, two. So then for step three, What's going to happen is you will have tosyl chloride, oxygen attacks like that. So your structure after step three looks like this. We have a tosylate leaving group. Remember, great, it's a great way to make an OH into a good leaving group. A little throwback to SN2, um, you know, 
uh, memory lane trip. Okay, so now we have a good leaving group. Now we're throwing in potassium terbutoxide, and I tried to draw it in this way because I know we're all so used to seeing it like this, right? But very common, you could run into this notation. I wanna expose you all to that. So we're doing elimination and it's a big bulky base. So we're forming the Hoffman product, the less substituted double bond. So for number four, we are absolutely going to have this double bond, right? Not the secondary secondary, but the secondary primary, okay? And then last but not least, just add HBr. So no shifts because the best thing we can do is secondary. We don't want to shift it to another secondary carbon. But if we look at this right here, I wanted to show you that we did you know, produce a stereocenter, right? We are attached to four different things. When we form the carbocation right here, there's no preference for bromine to attack above or below. So just make sure to reflect that we did perform, you know, or produce rather a racemic mixture. So draw a product plus an antimer. That is one and two. Let's do three and four on page four. Moving on to problems three and four on the fourth page. If we take a look up here, okay, four steps. Remember, one step at a time, keep track, draw the result, get to the end. So what we have in step one is remember in the, I think alcohol derivatives unit, in alcohols or alcohol derivatives, al alcohols, SLCL2 is a great way to perform SN2 on an alcohol because you then, you during the mechanism, you end up making a better leaving group out of OH and then you can get a CL on there. So in this first step, we do have a secondary carbon. So SN2 is still possible and it definitely will be with these reagents right here. So after step one, what we will have is a dashed CL. Because remember, it's SN2, which means we are coming from that backside and we will replace our OH with a lovely chloride, okay? So within step two, we are seeing NaNH2 and DMSO. So I wanted to throw that solvent in there to remember, remember for SN2 slash E2 stuff, we need a polar aprotic solvent. In this case, right, we have NH2 minus, super basic, right? We have a secondary good leaving group, so we're doing E2 here, right? Strong base, secondary, the solvent works out for us, good leaving group, we're going to be doing E2. Now remember, we it, with the ring, and just with any E2 reaction, we need to honor the anti periplanar requirement. Our leaving group is down, so the hydrogen we eliminate must be up. Remember, throw that party trick dance. So, luckily, we can see next door, because we have a small base in NH2 minus, we want to make the SATSEF product, the most substituted double bond. We have a secondary carbon here. This is a secondary carbon. However, secondary tertiary sounds pretty good. Luckily, the H is up. Our leaving group is down. So, we will eliminate NH2 minus, grab the H, electron swing down, give chlorine das boot, double bond goes here, ethyl, line to the ethyl group needs to be a straight line because we're dealing with sp2 carbons. You know that means we're trigonal planar, we're flat. Okay, so that takes care of one and two. Moving on to three, I hope you're seeing this and you're thinking, ah, okay, we did this E2 to get an epoxy, right? So we can reflect in an antimer at the end, but make sure, and I'm just going to go with wedges. We will make an epoxy across that double bond, which means if we're going wedges, the ethyl must be dashed. Okay, so now four is just attacking that epoxy, and I hope what you're seeing is acidic conditions, right? We see D3O+, plus, which is me being a little bit more difficult for you, but this means acidic environment. We have additional protons floating around. They just happen to be deuteriums. They just happen to have an extra neutron. And methanol is going to be our nucleophile. So when we attack here, so I, what I hope you will realize is we need to protonate this, but it's not going to be with a hydrogen. It's going to be with a deuterium, right? So that's kind of a way to almost trip you up. I don't want y'all to get tripped up. 
So when we protonate like this, then we will bring in our methanol. And remember, when attacking epoxides in acidic environments, we go with the more substituted carbon because of the resonance, right? It's the carbon that bears the strongest positive charge through the resonance. So I should say partial charge, but we will attack here. Bond breaks. So to finish off, I'll draw the direct result. To finish this off, we're going to have a wedged OD over here. Am I? Oh, I went one carbon far too far over. Didn't really matter, but I'll stay consistent. OD. We attacked from the dash side, so the ethyl flips up to be a wedge, which means our methanol will be a dash. And remember, it will initially look like this, but we will have cleanup. So our final product will be, after that H gets dumped, drop the positive charge. This is your final product here. I think the key being, make sure you realize this is deuterium. Don't just automatically slap hydrogen on there. Be careful. Okay, so that is the first problem. Now we get to this problem, which I kind of like because it's a fill in the reagent problem. I've given you the beginning and I've given you the end. I need you to tell me the story as to how we got there. Okay, so if we take a look here, one thing I, so right off the bat, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. We are not adding any carbon, so anything Grignard related or anything like that, get that out of the way. We are just working with this structure and this structure only. I hope what you're seeing though is the interesting chemistry happens on these first two carbons. So I, I almost want to take a retrosynthetic uh, synthesis approach to this, or retrosynthetic approach. So if we like, were to step this back, I hope the last thing you would see is we have two carbonyls, one of which is an aldehyde. So I bet you this last step was PCC. So if we step that back, Wedge methyl group, nothing changed there, but we would have an OH and an OH. Ah, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We had a diol, okay? Interesting. So, we know we have a few reactions. We could get this from an epoxide, but I really like to use osmium tetroxide and H2S workup to get diols super easy, and we don't really have stereochemistry at this position, so we don't really have to worry about, you know, does it have to be a sin or anti for these OHs? So we can then step this back to a double bond. So this was OSO4 and H2S. Then we could have something like this. And I hope you can see, we can definitely make that happen because we have a bromine. But we have the least substituted double bond. So now we can go back up here, I think. So this first step, I'm going to use LDA. Or you can use potassium terbutoxide. Anything to make sure that when you eliminate, you don't go this way. We go this way and get the less substituted double bond, okay? That will get us to here. Then our second step is going to be that osmium tetroxide H2S to give us our dial. And last but not least, we throw in PCC, and I'm even going to specify excess because we have two carbons we need to oxidize. So extra can't hurt. Okay, gang, one more problem. It's been a hell of a video. One more, let's do it. Okay, gang, last problem in this worksheet, solutions walkthrough. So if we take a look right here, you can see we have three steps and then we're home free. So you can see we have a good leaving group right here, uh, secondary carbon, and I hope what you're seeing up here is we have a very strong base in NH2 minus, a very strong small base, and a polar acrylic solvent. So this first step is screaming to me E2. Oh, E2, okay? So we need to check our anti-paired planar requirement. We wanna make the SATESF product, right? So let's see what we got. We clearly we have a secondary carbon. Secondary, secondary versus secondary tertiary. Secondary, tertiary, obviously more substituted double bond. However, we need to do some work beforehand because we currently have a cis periplanar situation, not anti-periplanar. And unlike a ring, we can actually work with this because we know we can rotate bonds. You know, on a ring, we don't have that luxury. So what we're gonna do first is obviously not try to rotate them in our heads unless you want to, unless you're, you know, go more power to you if you can. The double switch is always there for us. So we just need to, whoop. 
Sorry about that. So what we need to do is do switch swap two groups to remain, you know, we don't have to assign RNS, but what we could do is I'm going to swap the F, the, well, we have our hydrogen right here, right? So we want that to be facing away from us, right? Which would be opposite of our iodide. So let's go ahead and let's just even dash the hydrogen, wedge the ethyl, and then I will once more, um, oh, I will, there's my ethyl, dash the hydrogen, wedge the methyl, okay? So we have, oh, and I forgot to, you know, wedge my iodine, wedge my iodide, there we go. So this is just, all I did was swap two groups twice. So these are the equivalent structures, but we've rotated the bonds such that our hydrogen is on the uh, anti to our iodide. So now we can go ahead and bring in that NH2 minus. We can do our lovely E2, which means after step one, we have this structure right here. We keep it with, um, so we're gonna have our double bond here, which means my methyl group that was wedged is now just a straight line. And let me make sure I didn't add carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And just the one, that is after our first step. So now, steps two and three, this is just hydroboration, okay? However, we're gonna get a little bit more involved because you can see I've been a stinker and added deuterium in there. So, this is gonna require a little bit more knowledge of the mechanism, and if you need some brush up on the mechanism, check out uh, the hydroboration mechanism video where I show you two ways to do it. So, what we can do here, and it's very important to note, is that in the very first step of hydroboration, you do this. So, this carbon is going to reach out and grab the boron, and right here, this deuterium is gonna take the electrons and add to this carbon right there. So, this happens in a sin fashion. We are working on one side of the double bond, so we add to the same side of the double bond. So, we get a, and again, this will, we have a deuterium right there, as well as a BD2. Okay, and when I could go through the rest of this mechanism, this video is getting really long though, but you can see, and again, we will have plus an antimer, and we're not finished with the reaction. However, what I wanted to show you, oh, one, two, three, four, so this needs to be a dash, but what I wanted to show you, gang, is that they end up on the same side, and you're, so you're, this will turn into an OH. Again, check the video um, on the mechanism, but this is the important step to reflect stereochemistry, and that's what I thought made this problem difficult. So, the way this problem shakes out, because <clears throat> really this is just kind of like um, stick OH on in place of your BD2. So this becomes an OH, the methyl stays dashed, the deuterium is on the same side of the OH, that is critical, and of course we need to add a plus enantiomer. That is how this problem shakes out. Thank you for sticking with me. It's been a gauntlet. Whew. So go over these reactions. If some of them were confusing, don't worry. I think if you can do all these problems, you are in super, super, super good shape. If you're watching this video, that means you financially contributed to Geochem, and I can't thank you enough. For one, using the website. Two, being nice enough uh, and thinking the resources are hopefully valuable enough to pay for them. Um, I'm so glad you're using Geochem right now. I hope you're using it until your final days as a organic chemist. Uh, so I just want to say thank you, and I'm so happy to see you in this video, and I hope to see you all in the next video.